Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecturer in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to use the HLOOKUP function in Excel 2010. So before we go and write out the function, uh, let's look at a circumstance where we might want to use the HLOOKUP function. In my spreadsheet here, I've got two tables. The first table in yellow is what I'm calling my lookup table. And for simplicity, I'm using uh, three different types of books here and as assigning a price depending on the type of book. So, for example, ebooks are 10 euro, paperbacks are 25, and hardbacks are 30 euro. Of course, uh, pricing can get more complicated than this, but I'm keeping this simple to explain in my video. In the purple table and underneath, I've got information about the title of books and their authors being sold, and whether the book is a paperback, a hardback, or an ebook as it has been sold. So in my column D here, I need to know what price to charge each book. So in cell D8 here, for example, this is a paperback book. I can see from my lookup table that paperback books are 25 euro. So I've got a choice here. I can uh, type in 25 euro here, or just do a simple cell reference, um, or I can look up from this table, I can look up my value in the lookup table, and that's where HLOOKUP comes from. Over on my right-hand side, I've got the syntax of the HLOOKUP uh, function. Uh, you can see that there are four parts to it. It's, if you're familiar with the VLOOKUP function, it's very, very similar. The VLOOKUP lookup function looks for data in a vertical, in columns, whereas the HLOOKUP uh, function looks for data in a row or horizontal. There are four parts to it. The first part is the lookup value. In my case, this is going to be type. The second part is table array, which is going to be the information in my lookup table up here. The third part is I need to tell Excel which row in my table array uh, the values I want to use, in this case the prices, uh, are located. And the fourth and last of the uh, components of a HLOOKUP function is the range lookup. Uh, this can have a value of either true or false, depending on whether you want an exact match or not. So let's now go ahead and insert a HLOOKUP function here in cell D8. So first of all, I select the formulas ribbon across the top of Excel. And in the function library, I'm going to select the blue book here. That's the lookup and reference option. And this gives me a short list of uh, functions here. And uh, about a third of the way down, you can see the HLOOKUP function. If you hover your mouse over it uh, for a few seconds, it gives you a description and the syntax of what the uh, function is all about. So select HLOOKUP. And this gives me my function arguments window over here on the right side, which has four boxes in it, which correspond to the four values given in my HLOOKUP function syntax up here across the top. You can see in cell D8, it's already to started to insert the function. Uh, we now need to insert the four arguments in between the brackets. So the first of these is our lookup value. And I've already said this is our type, so in uh, for the row 8, I'm going to select cell C8, that's paperback, or I could type C8 in here. I now need to tell Excel where my data are, so I'm going to select cells B1 down to D2. This is my lookup table, so we can look up the values here. I now need to tell Excel uh, what row in my lookup table the data I'm looking for. So there are only two rows in my table. The first row are headers, and the second table contains the value. Second row contains the value, so I'm going to put in number two here. And finally, as we're looking for an exact match here, I'm going to type in the word false um, in this last of the four uh, variables here, and click OK. And this gives me a value of 25 euro, which I would expect if I look up the table visually, I can see the paperbacks are given as 25 euro. Now I'd like to be able to copy that formula uh, down to the rest of the cells here. So let's go ahead and do that. But you'll notice if you do that, that we get a problem straight away. And this has got to do with absolute cell referencing, because we haven't kept a constant absolute cell reference to the values in my lookup table. So let me undo that and double click on the formula that I've just inserted. I could type these in manually and something you might learn how to do when you become good at doing this. And in here you can see in green is my table array B1 to D2. So this is the piece I want to remain the same in all formulas as I go down through my column. So if I just simply click on B1 uh, and, and type in the letter F4 or hit the F4 key and do the same to D2, uh, click on D2 and uh, hit the F4 key, that inserts dollar signs to make these absolute values. So these two, this table array here, will not change as I copy my formula. So now I can just press enter. And I've still got 25 euro here, but this time, if I copy the formula down, you'll see, if you check up the values here, that everywhere, everywhere you, where you see a paperback occurring, the price is 25 euro. 
Everywhere where we see an ebook occurring, the price is 10 euro. And finally, everywhere where you see a hardback uh, occurring, you'll see the price is 30 euro. So basically what I've done is, in my purple table here, I have looked up the value, and these are horizontal values, in my lookup table at the top. And you can use a table like this for calculating commissions or tax rates or markups on your data. So that's how you use the HLOOKUP function in Excel 2010. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.